in this lesson, we're going to study Jesus' most influential sermon, often referred to as the Sermon on the Mount. This sermon is worth closer inspection for several reasons. Recorded in Matthew 5 through Matthew 7, the Sermon on the Mount is the largest sermon we have of Jesus. It therefore provides a good representation of how and what he spoke about. The length of the message also provides us with an opportunity to understand his teachings on a wide range of topics. This sermon covers Jesus' teachings on discipleship, his understanding and application of the Old Testament, his views on interpersonal relationships, how to prepare for heaven, along with other major themes. In three chapters, we get a very clear snapshot of the Son of God's views on Judaism, Christianity, and eternity. It is an immensely well-rounded sermon. So let's begin. You may find it handy to have a Bible open so you can follow along as we refer to the various sections. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12, Jesus begins his sermon with the Beatitudes. Beatitude is a Latin word for blessings. Jesus gives a list of people that will be blessed by God for their character. He mentions those who grieve, people impoverished in spirit, those hungering and thirsting for righteousness, peacemakers, and the persecuted as the most blessed of this world. The Beatitudes are a comforting reminder that God values the lowly as well as a call to the humble road of discipleship. Matthew 5, 13 through 20 addresses the relationship between God's people and the world. The disciples of Christ must be willing to stand out. As lights in a dark world, we are to be the salt of the earth. Salt adds flavor and it preserves. The world needs Christians to embrace God's commands, not merely doing the minimum, but striving to both keep and teach the least and the greatest of his commands. Jesus made the audacious call for his disciples to be better than all the religious leaders of the day. For I say to you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Now moving on to Matthew 5, 21 through 48, Jesus begins a series of explanations of Old Testament verses. He begins each section with a quotation from the Old Testament. Commands like, you shall not commit murder, you shall not commit adultery, and you shall not make false vows are explained by Jesus. A common misconception is that Jesus is contradicting the Old Testament teachings, but that isn't the case at all. Instead, Jesus is explaining the deeper goals of those commands. God wants us to avoid murder and the deeper issue of hatred. We're to hate adultery and the lustful attitude toward women that precedes adultery. Jesus is elevating these commands to their proper position and emphasizing the development of character God intended behind them. Even the statement, an eye for an eye, is clarified by Jesus as a teaching for the government to punish evildoers, not an encouragement for individual vigilantism. After clarifying Old Testament teachings, we move to Matthew chapter 6, verse 1 through 24. Jesus discusses three seemingly righteous acts, giving to the poor, praying, and fasting. He explains how we must do the right things for the right reasons. Someone who gives to the poor so they can be seen as doing good, or someone that prays lengthy prayers so others will acknowledge them as pious, is fooling themselves. God knows why we do things. Beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. In Matthew 6, 25-34, Jesus addresses another human problem, anxiety and worry. He demonstrates the power of God to recognize our needs before we ask, through examples in the natural world that highlights God's sovereign power to preserve and provide. We have one job. Seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Turning the page to Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 12, Jesus begins with the statement, Do not judge, so that you will not be judged. For in the way you judge, you will be judged, and by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. This is perhaps one of the most misunderstood of all the teachings in Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Jesus isn't telling people to not make judgments. After all, the statement, Do not judge, is a judgment. Jesus is warning against hypocritical judgment, judging the behavior of others while we ourselves practice ungodliness. Christians are called to be fair and to judge using righteous judgment. In everything, therefore, 
Treat people the same way you want them to treat you, for this is the law and the prophets. The last section of the Sermon on the Mount begins in Matthew 7, verse 13. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction, and there are many who enter through it. For the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life, and there are few who find it. Jesus finishes this sermon with some hard truths. Most people won't go to heaven. He warns against false prophets who lead people away from God while professing godliness. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. It isn't enough to be religious. We must be faithful. And to be faithful, we must use the Bible. And with that warning, Jesus finishes his iconic sermon, amazing the crowds of Galilee with his wisdom and his teachings.